Hello, Mr. Fox here. And today, I'm going to talk to you about an adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters. Now, this obviously is making fun of the Ninja Turtles. It's supposed to be a comedy. Trying to read this would probably give you a headache because it was a 3D comic. You can see the 3D glasses are still attached here. Kind of fun. And here's the red and blue lenses. You would detach them and construct the 3D glasses. And then you would look at the 3D images that are on the comics. Now, these look really weird to you probably because, well, you're not wearing the 3D glasses, but these are comprised of both red and blue images. Now, the 3D glasses that have the red and blue lenses, you would look at special types of photographs that are called anaglyphs, or anaglyph images, and it creates the illusion of depth, because using a red and blue lens tricks the brain into seeing a 3D image, because each image is different and it creates the illusion of death to the character. Now they're not, you know, extremely different, just slightly different, of course. And this tricks your brain into seeing what it thinks is a 3D image. A hamster holiday. So, this is a Christmas comic. And it talks about how their happy eclipse is letting them have a vacation. This is definitely really interesting. Uh, this came from a time when 3D was probably going to be the future of comics. Say that 3D glasses are included. It's unique to see this in such great condition and the fact that it has the 3D glasses that came with it still inside of it. Uh, it's just really, really interesting to see. I hope you like seeing this, as always. I'm glad I get to share it with you. Another interesting thing about this comic is, if you flip through the pages, you'll notice it doesn't really have any advertisements anywhere, because that would be really difficult to put in a comic like this that has these kind of images to make a 3D advertisement. It'd probably be pretty expensive. Except in the back here where it talks about three women and some of the other comics they have coming. This is called The New Wave down here. Uh, and then, you know, talks about back issues and stuff. And talks a bit on the back here. Chin and Fiela, the people who made this comic, have a really disgusting warped sixth sense of humor. That's what it says by Gary Larson. Black Belt Hamsters is Ote by Buckwheat. Um, um, good. Past the Salt, Boris the Bear. These are all characters that they used in the comics from Eclipse Comics. Adolescent Radioactive Black Belt. What? Hey, Don. How's about a hamster's coloring book? Hamsters aerobic exercise videotape, hamster chewable vitamins, and hamster steam park. Huh? Dawn? Okay. That says Dean Molinade. Just parodying themselves on the back of the comic. Uh, Eclipse Comics? And I know a lot about them. I'd have to look them up. I don't think they're still in business, actually. This was made in 1986. I think DC had some 3D comics, like, uh, I know there were some Batman 3D comics. Now, again, just a really interesting thing to see. Uh, 3D comics I've always thought of as being pretty rare. They're not something you see anymore. And they probably haven't been seen for a while.
Eclipse Comics was founded in 1977. They're from California. They were mostly active in the 1980s and early 1990s. It says here they published the first graphic novel intended for the newly created comic book specialty store market. Uh, that's really interesting. Again, I, I like this. This is kind of funny. Trying to read it without the 3D glasses is kind of difficult and will probably give you a headache. I'm not going to take the 3D glasses out of it because I don't want to ruin the comic or cause it any more damage than it already has. But this is really, really cool. What made unique uh, Eclipse Comics also unique is it was the first to offer royalties and creator ownership of rights and the first comics company to publish trading cards. That's actually fascinating. Now it says here it was the first to offer royalties and creator ownership of rights. This is important to know because uh, Jack Kirby, who actually created the Marvel Universe, uh, had a lot of problems and lawsuits with Stan Lee. Now, Jack Kirby, as far as I'm aware, lost that case. What happened was the judge determined that what Jack Kirby made for Marvel Comics was what's called work for hire. And work for hire means that you create something for the company and the company owns it. They own that creation. So if you do work for hire, for example, I own Kitsune Publications, I pay you to create something for me, I own that and all the rights to it because that's work for hire. Now, the opposite side of that is different, where you create something and you say you'd like me to publish it and I pay you royalties. That means that I don't own your creation, but you do allow me to publish it for you, and by paying you royalties, you make money off every copy of that it's sold, etc., etc. As far as I know, that's how that works. But anyway, the whole thing between Jack Kirby and Stan Lee is the reason why the work for hire law exists. Because there was a lot of lawsuits between comic book companies and creators. Because, you know, the creators obviously think they deserve a bigger paycheck because they made something great, which is true. But you made it for the company, and the company owns that. So you have to keep that in mind. If you want to be an artist and you want to create things, that's cool. You should do that. But you should keep in mind that you want to make sure you create for yourself and not for another company. For example, I commission an artist to create things for me and draw out my stories. I own that. Now, if an artist makes something themselves and wants me to publish it, that's a whole different ballgame is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, moving on. This was really cool. I hope you enjoyed seeing this. And I'm glad I got to share it with you. As you know, I like to share all of these weird comics that I encounter. And this is definitely one of the more unusual ones. Particularly with the 3D images. It's actually pretty fantastic. Uh, I never thought that I would see another one of these again. It just so happens I was looking through a bargain bin up at the half-priced books that's by me, and I found this little gem in there, and I thought, well, this is pretty fantastic. I, I bet people would like seeing this, and so here it is. This is pretty neat. Um, anyway, I'm glad you like seeing this here. And that's all the time I have for today. Thanks for listening, and have a good night, all.